Now let's go ahead and hop into the endocrine system. Okay, the endocrine system, that is the uh, second great controlling system of the body. Uh, that influences like your metabolic activities, the, uh, like the, the energy processes of cells uh, using hormones. You have a few endocrine glands. You have the pituitary gland, the thyroid, the parathyroid, your adrenal glands, your pineal gland, uh, and your thymus. Um, you also have the, the pancreas and your gonads, which both produce hormones as well as exocrine products. Um, you have the hypothalamus that, as we've talked about in the nervous system, uh, that has neural functions, but it also releases hormones, so it has an endocrine function as well. Um, there are other kinds of tissues and organs that also produce hormones. You have adipose t cells. Um, there's some cells in your small intestine that produce hormones, your stomach, your kidneys, and your heart. Uh, all of those organs have um, parts, parts of them that uh, produce hormones as well. Let's take a look at this picture here. So we've talked about the pineal gland, right? Then we have the hypothalamus up here and the pituitary gland. We've talked about all three of those in the nervous system. Now we're going to be introducing the thyroid gland. Then you'll see on here you have these parathyroid glands. I also have this um, thymus right here, the thymus gland. You have the adrenal glands, which if you think about this word here, ad means on or upon. Renal, meaning kidneys. So these are the glands that are on top of the kidney. If you've ever heard of uh, adrenaline, that's adrenaline. It, it's, that's the hormone secreted from the adrenal glands. Um, your pancreas uh, is another major endocrine organ. Um, then you have the gonads, ovaries for females and testes for males. So you have a couple of things that aren't really considered hormones, but they do have, um, they are chemical signals. Uh, you have autocrines. Those are chemicals that only change things that happen on the cells that are secreting them. So auto meaning self. Okay. So that's, uh, chemicals that are just affecting the self, the same cell. All right. And then paracrine, you think of para as in like parallel, like alongside, um, these are, chemicals that just affect the cells right around the cell that secretes them. And like I said, they're not really considered hormones since uh, hormones are generally um, uh, like long distance. They go across uh, like the entire body, not just uh, right at the one place. Um, so to define what hormones actually are themselves, they are chemical substances that cells secrete into the extracellular fluid, thinking extra being outside and cellular cell. Uh, that's the fluid outside of the cell. And these chemical substances usually go um, all over the place. These regulate metabolic function of other cells. Uh, they can kick in instantly, or it can take a while for the, uh, the effects to really kick in. Um, once they do kick in, they tend hormone, the effects of hormones tend to uh, last for quite a while. Uh, the two main uh, categories of hormones are amino acid-based or steroids. So like I said, you have the amino acid-based, uh, which is the amines, uh, thyroxine, peptides, uh, protein hormones, um, which I guess peptides are kind of proteins, but uh, that's all amino acid-based. Um, you also have steroids. Um, that's just another category of hormones. And you have uh, eicosanoids. Those are more fat-based. They're uh, like lipids, um, which uh, the eicosanoids aren't, aren't especially important to us right now. So we have um, the main mechanism by which hormones function. Uh, they can target certain cells and alter their plasma membrane permeability. That's the, the, the layer that surrounds cells that can change how they uh, allow things to come in to the cell. Um, hormones can also cause cells to start synthesizing certain proteins. They can activate or they can turn on or turn off certain enzyme systems. They can 
get cells to start secreting certain materials, uh, or they could just stimulate mitosis, the cell division process in cells. So those are the, the pretty much the main things that hormones can cause their target cells to, to do. And that's at the cellular level. Obviously, there's a, a larger um, picture when you zoom out a little bit what these hormones do to the body. So with steroids, when steroid hormones interact with their target cells, that tends to prompt uh, DNA transcription, which produces mRNA. And then that prompts uh, translation of certain proteins. And that brings out that, that kind of cellular effect, which when that happens to a bunch of different cells, that has a larger uh, impact on whatever system that's affecting. So there are uh, some, some hormones only affect certain cells, and that's called the target cell specificity. Uh, they only activate certain cells. The cells need to have these specific receptors, like they need to, basically they need to, the, the lock needs to fit the key. Um, they need to have these receptors for the hormone to actually bind to and then cause those uh, those effects. They can be inside the cell, intracellular, like within the cell, uh, or they can just be outside the cell on the plasma membrane itself. Um, hormones tend to get throughout the body in the blood, uh, and that can, uh, they can circulate in one of two ways. They can be free or bound. If they're just uh, unencumbered, they're just kind of going through on their own, then that's considered a free uh, hormone. And then you have uh, steroids and thyroid hormones, they tend to be attached to plasma proteins um, in order to, to travel through the blood. Uh, hormones interact with each other in one of three ways. We permissiveness, which, you know, getting permission, uh, it can't, uh, like a, a hormone can't do its job without another hormone also being present. Um, you have synergism, like synergy, right, working together. Um, if you like multiple hormones do the same thing for a target cell, so that that's considered a, a synergistic interaction. Then you have antagonism, which you talk about the antagonist in a story, or you talk about the antagonist, uh, when we're, when we're learning about muscles, um, some hormones work against other hormones. Um, in order for hormones to be released, uh, there are a few different ways that that can happen. Um, if it's controlled just by the um, blood level, that's a negative feedback system. And there's just a really narrow range that the hormone can be concentrated in. If you've ever gotten a full blood panel done, you've probably seen a bunch of uh, different hormones listed on that. Uh, and then there's a, a range that um, is considered normal. Uh, and your doctor can make different medical judgments based on that. Um, there are a few different responses uh, that can trigger certain releases of hormones and how the hormones are synthesized and then released. You have humoral stimuli, you have neural stimuli, and hormonal stimuli. So humoral stimuli, I think humor is in uh, like in the ancient Greek medical way, not as in the uh, comedy way. Uh, humor is in like, uh, like fluid. The humoral stimuli, that's based on the amount of uh, ions and nutrients in the blood. Uh, for example, the concentration of calcium ions in the blood, that can uh, trigger the parathyroid hormone. If it, if there is, if the calcium concentration declines, then that stimulates the PTH. Uh, and then once that concentration gets up to the point that it needs to be, that the body recognizes that's good, then PTH, um, uh, stops being secreted and that's humoral stimuli. Let's see here. Um, uh, just basically an image of what I said. So neural stimuli. This is when the, uh, the nervous system actually stimulates the hormone release. Okay. Um, this is like the, um, the adrenal glands when they secrete, that's based on uh, a, a nervous response. Then you have hormonal stimuli. Um, when other hormones are produced, 
that can trigger the the system to start uh, releasing other hormones. Uh, so like one hormone is response or is released in response to another hormone that's produced by another endocrine organ. Uh, so you can see like with um, the uh, pituitary gland, it can secrete a hormone that stimulates the thyroid gland to secrete another hormone. Uh, and it's just kind of like a cascading effect there. So you also have the, uh, the nervous system is sometimes able to um, kind of override stimulation of certain endocrine glands, um, as well as the negative feedback loops that it can get trapped in. Um, which is super useful instead of just being trapped in a negative feedback mechanism. Um, like with blood glucose levels, usually there's a, a certain level of blood glucose uh, that your body maintains. But then if you were in a stressful situation, uh, then the body needs to utilize more glucose, which glucose is sugar. So like blood sugar levels, uh, which sugar is obviously the um, um, just a, an energy source for your cells. So when uh, they're under stress, the body needs more glucose. And so the sympathetic nervous system and the hypothalamus, they kick in to start supplying more glucose to the cells. And that is everything for this first part to the endocrine system.